in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Gacken World Eye. Let's get on with it. Before I go any further, let me first explain why this video exists. I recently made another video demonstrating a kit from Gacken. Now, after I made that one, whilst looking for other kits from the same company, I stumbled across this and it really piqued my interest because it's a screen that takes up half a globe, or to use the correct term, a hemisphere, with an inbuilt video projector. Now, I've got some prior history in this kind of area because two years ago I reviewed the Mova Globe, which is something that I really love and is still going strong. And then six years ago I made a video about the Mirror Ball, which displayed crude animated images using a persistence of vision effect. Now Gak can make educational toys, so the world eye seems to be aimed at that particular market, but also appears to be capable of displaying a lot of different images on that screen. I was particularly interested in this picture which shows a fishbowl. So I was imagining that even if the educational side is of no interest, perhaps this could fulfill a similar role to something like a lava lamp. So whilst I get this thing out of the box, just a quick reminder that I don't know anything about this product other than looking at a couple of pictures on the internet. I'm going to learn as I go along. I'm going to be able to demonstrate it to you whilst I'm doing so, so we can both learn about it together. And by the end of the video, we'll all know whether or not it was worth me buying it. And you can therefore thank me for taking the hit if it wasn't. As you can see, it's got a remote control in here, infrared remote control. It has a little uh, D cell in the back, which you activate by pulling that thing out of there. We've also got a power supply, of course. It runs off uh, mains voltage. This multi-voltage power supply, that one though, which is good news. And inside here, we've also got a little USB stick, which has video files on it. And we've got the instructions as well, which are all in Japanese. After the last Gakken video went out, a lot of people got in touch to tell me that I could have used the Google Translate app to translate Japanese to English. Now, I'm aware of that app because I've even used it in an earlier video, but I didn't need to use it on that one because the instructions could be followed just by looking at the pictures. And with this one, I don't even need to refer to the manual because it's a very easy device to understand. On the back we've got a fan on the top and then a speaker on the bottom together with air inlets and then from back to front we've got power supply, HDMI mini, USB and headphone output. It comes supplied with this slightly flimsy plastic stand but it does the job, it enables you to put the device at four different angles as well. Although if you want to change the angle you'll have to remove it from it entirely which means also unplugging your power supply and your USB stick. But I thought this was a sensible idea. The remote control's got a place to fit onto the back of the world eye so that you don't lose it. Right, so it's time to power this device up now. So I'll plug this into a travel adapter, plug that into the wall. The other end of the wire goes into the back of the device and it automatically starts up. You don't have to press any buttons. So I'll put that USB stick in and we'll have a look at it. Now you can see when it comes on here, I've got it at a bit of an angle, so I'll need to straighten it out slightly, and then we can have a look on here. Using the remote control, I can choose between USB, HDMI, or settings. If we look at the USB, that tells us what's on that USB stick that was supplied with it. And we'll have to drill down through a couple of menus here, but eventually we get to the movies that we can play on it. So you can see we've got four different choices on the screen here, and I'll show you on the side of the box what those are. There are a total of 52 videos on that USB stick and they're broken down as following. We've got 16 about the Earth, 16 about planets, another 16 about stars, and then just four about undersea life. Most of the videos, with the exception of the undersea ones, are quite short, usually about two or three minutes in length. But let me show you the first minute of one of the videos about planets. たちが住む惑星、地球。恒星である太陽を中心に、その周りを回る8個の惑星の一つです。太陽から近い順に、水星、金星、地球、火星。木星、木星、天王星、海王星です。
存在しますこのほか火星と木星の間には何万個もの小惑星が作る小惑星体があります Okay, so what do you take away from that? Well, there's a couple of things. The first one is it's very Japanese. Of course, it's made for the Japanese market, but it's got a Japanese voiceover and Japanese text appears on the screen. You can, of course, mute the sound, but you can't get rid of the text because it's built into the video files. And the second thing is that these videos are all very much designed to be educational. I was just hoping for a nice, attractive spinning globe, but it doesn't seem like there is one of those. They're all very much designed to tell you something, whether it's about day and night cycles or earthquakes or temperature zones. The most visually effective videos, though, are the ones about the Earth and the planets. When it comes to looking at some of the other ones, like the ones about stars, they don't quite have the same impact. And this underwater footage just doesn't work properly for me on this round screen. It's shot with a handheld camera that's moving around. I really think you have to have specially formatted video if you're going to show it on this particular device. Now this is more the kind of thing that I was hoping for, a sort of video kinetic sculpture. Unfortunately though, this video is only three minutes in length and at the end of it, it fades out and text appears on the screen. You can loop these videos around, but it kind of ruins the effect a little bit. And here is that fishbowl video that I was really looking forward to seeing. In fact, it's one of the things that convinced me to try this system out. But unfortunately, it's only 30 seconds in length. It's included on the memory stick as one of the extra free videos, along with this one that's of some fireworks, which I don't think really works inside a bowl, but still. If we go into the settings menu, we can change the on-screen display language into English. So as you can see, when we back out of that menu, these things are now sleep timer and color temperature and picture mode. But the other things are still in Japanese, the file names, of course, because those are just included in the actual video file names, but also the overlaid graphics on the video. And of course, the spoken language is still Japanese. The one thing it will do, you see at the top right there, it says play on top of the video now in English where it didn't show that before, but that's really all that changes. Now, if we have a look at those video files that are on that USB stick, we can see that we've got these four folders here. And if we look in them, they're just normal MP4 files. So you can just play them back in a normal video player. Now, if we just have a look at one of these, you'll notice that the way the video is formed is slightly unusual. The videos are 640 by 480. However, they play back on the projector at 480 by 480. So it cuts off the edges, the black edges that you can see on there. But if I blow it up to full screen here, you can see that there has been some sort of unusual effect applied to the perspective. So it doesn't look right played back on this flat screen here however once it's played back on the rounded screen of the projector it really does look like a proper rotating globe so after uploading an early version of this video to Patreon, one of my patrons kindly got in touch and said that he might be able to supply me with some video files that would look good on this device. So he sent them over. I have put them on this USB stick here. As you can see, I'm able to select the files, put a tick next to the ones I want to display and take the tick off the ones I don't. You can effectively set up a little playlist and it'll loop through those videos that you've selected. But anyway, let's have a look at one of the video files he's created to see how much it looks like the originals. And look at this. This is really really good. So he already had a video file of a kind of rotating earth, but then he's applied a pinch effect to it. I think it was in After Effects, but he's also done something in Photoshop for me as well. So I'm not too sure which one this is, but as you can see, if you apply a perspective pinch, it does look just like the original files. It's really good. Now we've hit the end of this one. So it's loading in the next one. Now the original intention was that these video files would just loop because they were perfect loops of the earth. However, the loading time in between puts pay to that it doesn't really work because you get this big blank screen so what you'd really need is a big long video file that played forever well a couple of hours or so and then you wouldn't notice the load times as much now for this next shot i'm using one of the video files that came with the device i'm just holding it in my hand because i wanted to be able to rotate it around a little bit just to show you how much you can see around the edges of the image and also how good the angle of view is how you can view it off axis and you're still able to view the image on that screen and this video that I'm showing you on the device at the moment might look like a standard rotating globe. However, in a couple of seconds, it starts talking about continental drift. 
You can see about two thirds of the way down the specs here that the device supports MPEG or MP4 video or JPEG stills at 480x480. 480 480. You can put larger video files in than that. I don't know how large, but I've put a 640x480 480 video in that I shot with a dash cam and I've uh, shrunk the size down a little bit. And I've put that onto the USB stick. As you can see, that's playing fine. Now, one thing you can't see with the camera, uh, there's quite a lot off to the edges that you can't see from this straight on view. So if I just twist it round a little bit, you'll be able to see how much the image wraps around the edges either side so it, this is really something that you'd have to see in person to be able to properly appreciate but hopefully you get a bit of an idea just looking at it through this camera when you talk about video resolutions, 480 by 480 does sound quite low nowadays. However, I was pleasantly surprised by the image quality. And I think that's down to the fact that this screen is quite small. Another thing that I was quite impressed by is how well this device copes in a well-lit room. Normally, projectors don't cope well at all. However, this one, with all the studio lights blaring down on it, it's still quite visible. Of course, it performs better if you turn the lights down a bit or switch them off entirely, but it's really really great that you don't have to do that. Right, let's try playing back some video through this HDMI socket. So I'm putting an HDMI mini lead into there. The other end of that is going into this old Roku box. And then we'll be able to play some files back off Netflix and YouTube and things. So we'll start off with YouTube. And I've found an aquarium video on there. So I've put it on here, as you can see. Notice at the top there, there's a black line. And that's because it's a 69 video, 69 ratio. And of course, this is a well one to one ratio device really but you're better off showing four three images on it and then it'll show the middle part but you can see i'm missing the top off that but look at this it's pretty good isn't it how you can see all the way around there the text on the screen is telling you to buy this because it's really an advert but as you can see that's uh pretty impressive not bad at all doesn't look uh doesn't look too bad that so maybe i could put a video file on there of an aquarium that i've downloaded from somewhere one thing you have to be careful of though is the aspect ratio because this thing is um not a full screen you can see things are missing off the edge just look at the uh on screen menus here i can only see a little tiny bit of them now i've set this roku box up into a 43 output aspect ratio so this is as good as it's going to get it's not trying to display 69 on this screen now of course the screen is 480 by 480 which means it's square so rather than being 43 or 69 it's 1 1 it's a square image so you're cutting the middle out even of a 4 3 image so you have a bit of trouble navigating things put it like that so you might not want to use this as your main television for watching Netflix and things. But just to give you an idea as to what it does look like, I'll get this loaded up here. I was able to get that YouTube video before, not by typing it in because I couldn't find that part of the screen. But what I did on my tablet, I saved it in the watch later queue. And that's how I was able to play it back by just finding that menu on the device. But there you go. You can see that's what Netflix looks like when viewed on the Gacken World Eye. It's unfortunate that the main purpose of this device, which is educational, is completely lost on me because it does look pretty interesting. However, once you take that away, you are still left with an unusual screen which you can display some interesting images on. And what those are, well, that's down to you. But over to me in the garage for a wrap up. I suppose it shouldn't really come as a surprise that an educational toy that's made for the Japanese market doesn't really hold that much interest for a middle-aged chap that doesn't understand Japanese. However, if you take away the educational side, which are really just those video files contained on that USB stick, you're then left with a media player attached to a projector that projects onto the inside of a convex screen. So what can you do with that? Well, perhaps you could put it in a shop window to advertise sales, get people's attention. It certainly draws the eye, that's for sure. Another thing I thought of, a bit of a niche uh, thing this though but I know there are people out there that are really into Halloween so can you imagine having a live feed over the HDMI put this outside the house maybe have it looking like it's some sort of crystal ball and terrify children with it that might be something that appeals to some people uh, I don't know maybe you can think of some better uses and if you can I've got links to these in the video description but that's it for the moment as always thanks for watching
So I went to the doctor and he said, I'm sorry, but the results are back and you appear to be suffering from yuppie flu. And I said, what, Emmy? And he said, yes, why owe you? <laughs> oh, your jokes are so funny. And you're the wittiest man I've ever met. I'm so glad we're married. Ooh, I'm the luckiest girl around. And did I ever tell you about that time when I was able to post the first comment under a YouTube video? You did, but it's such a great story. I'd love to hear it again. Well, I was sitting here and I was on my computer and I was looking at YouTube. Is he still on that flipping game? Yes, he is. He's been playing it for hours. I don't understand what he sees in it, but at least it's giving me a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs>